Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and working with you to make your game nights better. Today, the question I'm answering is what's in the box in regards to this big, fairly heavy game. A significantly weighty and multiple ways war game from Richard Borg, Command and Colors Napoleonics. Now I am a huge fan of Command and Colors Ancients. I have tried other Command and Color games like Battle Lore. I've even tried uh, the Mech Battle one whose name Abaddon. I've played many of Richard Borg's games and I'm a huge fan. I generally prefer the Ancients theme to me or, or setting. I don't, do you call it a theme when it's historic? Period? We'll say the period. There we go. I greatly, uh, I, I prefer the Ancients period. Um, the ancient setting is awesome, but everyone, every time I mention that, they're like, no, no, you got to get Napoleonics. I admit I know very little of the Napoleonic Wars. I am not a historical war gamer or a miniature gamer, but I love Richard Borg's system. I have so much fun moving my cubes on the map and using my cards to move on the three different flanks and everything else about these games. So I'm finally going to give it a chance. I'm going to find out if everyone out there is right that this really is the best Command & Colors game. Now to do that, the first thing I have to do is open up the box. So I'm inviting you to join me as I take a look at my copy of Command & Colors Napoleonics for the first time. Now I'm going to start by cutting the shrink. And then I'll read off the back of the box. All right, so Command & Color Napoleonics, 15 Napoleonic battles. Now you are in command. Note there are expansions that have more battles. Command & Colors Napoleonics is based on the highly successful Command & Colors game system, where command cards drive movement while creating a fog of war. The battle dice resolve combat quickly and efficiently. I gotta say yes, everything I know about Command & Colors, that is very much true. Now, Napoleonics introduces many new game concepts that will add historical depth and provide even the most veteran players new experiences and challenges. This is the part everyone tells me is better. Um, the scale of the game fluctuate. In some scenarios, an infantry unit may represent an entire division. I'm going to skip some of this. Um, the Napoleonic tactics you need to execute to gain victory conform remarkably well to the advantages and limitations inherent in the actual armies of the day. So it's trying to be a historical game. Um, battle showcased focus on historical confrontations between the British and the French armies. They talk about the stylized battlefield. They talk about the highlights. So due to the nature of weaponry, ranged fire is much more effective, which makes sense. Many battles will be won or lost before you close to engage, which will be very different from Command and Colors Ancients. Um, as most units suffer losses, the number of dice they have decreases. So that's new. Units reduced to single blocks may not be able to battle due to terrain dice restrictions. That's interesting. Units in the core game retreat this core game. Retreat one hex per flag. So that's a rule change. You know what? There's a bunch more of these. I'm not going to get into it. We want to see what's in the box. I'm going to figure out how to play, and I'll be talking about the game as I play it. Then you can learn those kind of things. I don't think you need to sit and go through this whole list. So this is H14+. Plus. It is two-player only game. Playing time, one hour per battle. I think that's being a little generous. Complexity here is medium. I will say that. I mean, I'm calling this a heavy game. Well, compared to um, Catan or Wingspan, yes, this is heavy, but compared to a Hex Encounter war game or like an advanced squad leader, this is simple. So it's medium on that war game scale or waro because it does have very many Euro game elements. Um, so there's web links and other things here, and it does talk about what you're going to get. So you do have three different factions in this game. You have France, Britain, and Portugal. So let's take a look at what you actually get inside the box without getting into the minutia that I know the war gamer is going to love anyway. All right, so here we have my box. I'm going to crack this open for the first time. Um, Richard Borg is the designer here. I love it. Um, this is a fascinating, excellent system that just doesn't want to open. There we go. So we start, of course, with the rules of play. Not, oh, oh okay, it's not quite as bad as I thought. Not a thin book but not overly intimidating. GMT Games is uh, a war game publisher, so their games tend to follow... Um... No, they don't, okay. I was gonna say they tend to follow the like 1.12, 1.13 type of format. Uh, it's text is, is standard size, I would say, for the size of a rule book. 
There is a lot of text. Um, graphics in here are, are digitally added, so it's not like a picture of the actual dice, it's a digital image. Um, there are some callouts here, two column layout. Kind of talks about the board a bit here. Now we get some nice colors. Um, one of the things, I don't know if it's the same in this version as the other ones, but be very careful when, when stickering your cubes to match what's shown here. So there's some other counters we're going to find, how to set up the game. I, it's a dry war game, in a way. Like, they're well done, but this is the kind of thing you get with these kind of games. So to be honest, these rules look very clear to me. Um, not a lot of examples, not a lot of graphics. Sorry, a lot of examples, not a lot of graphics, but they're probably enough to learn the game. As a non-war gamer, I found Command & Colors not difficult to learn, but there was a lot to soak in. Once you start playing, though, I found them pretty simple. Again, that's comparing it to heavier war games. This is no Hannibal Rome versus Carthage. There are no page numbers? All right, so... Now here's the interesting specifically about uh, Napoleonic tactics, about infantry squares and so on. Terrain types that you're going to have in this game. Not a lot of different terrain in the, in the base box. So again, there are expansions for this. Which can't seem to open the last couple pages here. So then there's a reference showing all the various command cards. So 24 pages. Not a small rule book, but again, for a, for a heavier war game. Then we have the scenarios. Uh, note I do have the second edition of this. I don't know if that's the most current edition. So you always use the same board, but you change up which hex tiles to put on. You get a bit of historical background and special rules, how to win. I'm just gonna go through this very quickly. These are probably, yes, so these are in order of historical when they happened. Um, so you can play through a camp full campaign. What there is no rules for, at least in the base box, is actual campaign play where the effects of game one will affect game two. As a war game, you're going to want to know stats. Here are your stats. Here are your different troops, how far they can move, their odds of hitting against different troop types, and so on. You have one of these for each player. More reference cards for melee combat and range combat results. So these are the different range and melee combat tiles and what dice results hit on which types. Now in general, in this game, and this is one of the brilliant things about Command & Colors is, if you roll a blue, you hit a blue unit. If you roll a yellow, you hit a yellow unit. If you roll a red, you hit a red unit. What changes are the other two dice, which are, which are attacks or retreats? The basic system though is, if I'm attacking a blue cube or a blue unit, I need a blue to hit. And then there again, more reference to the different unit types. And there's going to be a lot of unit types in this game. I'll just bring that up so you can kind of see what you got. Now, again, there's two of these because it's a two-player game. Oh, there's more than two? Interesting. I'm not sure why they would give you four of these. But you have four of them. Then the train type reference. And a summary of all the cards. This is nice. So if you don't know the game and you're just learning to play... This way you don't have to memorize all the cards in the deck. You can always look to see what's available. And you'll know that if your opponent already played two Assault Centers, you're not going to be able to draw an Assault Center that you might need for your big move. And again, two of these? Yeah, two of these. Then we get into the bane of every Command & Colors game, and that is stickers. Okay, you ready for this? So kind of like sleeving cards, what I recommend you do here is put on your favorite Netflix show, something you can binge, set up a TV tray, take out your stickers, and put it together. One, two, three, four, five, six pages of stickers. This alone might scare people away from these games. As a fan of Command & Colors Ancients, it's worth it. Hex counters, again, it's not the prettiest. It's, it's not a, a pretty game. It's an effective game. So you can clearly tell where the rivers are, where the forests are. We have two of these. These are surprisingly thin. They're thinner than I expected. Um, we also have lakes, hills, fortifications, towns. And then other counters as required. 
And then this is something new in this game. I don't know exactly how it works, but it has to do with military squares, infantry squares. How infantry squares work. What I'm guessing is that a single block out there might represent more than one. Now we get to the board. This is not going to fit on my webcam. Not even close. But I don't know if there's a point in me even showing it off because it's just a bunch of hexes. See? You just get a green field. That's it. Big green field that you put terrain on. It works. What I've always liked about these games is the size of the hexes. The size of the hexes in this have always been nice. So I would say that's it. But we're missing the blocks. Look at that. Is that intimidating? Look at that. All of these, <laughs> all of these need to go on all of those. So what you should have, there we go. No, no, I'm missing one. Pretty sure you have three sizes for each one. Yep. Three sizes for each color. And there are actually three colors in here. So you have the reds, the blues. Oh, wow, I pulled those out. And the browns. And I don't know if the browns are in all three colors, sizes. Yes, they are. Meat of the game. These are your units. Commanding colors is a block war game. These are your blocks. Note in this, there is no fog of war. You are going to put stickers on both sides of this. You are going to be able to see it so is your opponent. And unlike, say, the Columbia block games, there's no different sides. There's no rotating your block while playing. This could be a miniature. Instead, GMT has chosen, chosen to go with wooden blocks for their units in their Command and Colors game. Now, if you want a Command and Colors game with miniatures, check out Battle Lore from Fantasy Flight Games, maybe. Now, he also has black cubes. These are going to get those other stickers. These are your trackers, your various... Um, oh, no, these aren't cubes. Sorry, these are the dice. Not what I thought they were. Dice. So yes, even the dice don't have the stickers on them yet. Then, last but not least, the command part. There's the colors. Colors. Command is the cards. I'm slightly low to open these because I have no way to store them out. So here you have it. Uh, there's not a lot of graphics. It's functional. This literally is going to tell you, you'll get to move one unit on that flank of the board. Plus there's also be issue order there, unit on the left flank. But when you use this, you only get to move one unit, right? That's lousy, but it's a scout card. When you play this, you get to do draw two of the new cards and decide which one to keep. And that's where all the strategy of this game comes from. So you're going to have scout left, scout center, scout right. And those are going to get more things. Probe, you're going to move two units into a flank. And then you have probe the center, two units. You're going to have probe all the different front, center, right. Then you're going to have probe on the right flank. You're going to attack. You're going to move three units on the left. Three units down the center. Three units on the right. Then you have assault, which has some kind of special rules. Order probably all your certain colors. Salt the right flank. Then you've got... Recon and force, move units on all the sides. This is this is the, the chunkiness of this game. Then you have all these special cards. Now these are pretty much in every Command and Colors game. These will be unique to this game. And you'll note they have the Napoleonic graphic as well. Now I don't know if they're the same deck. They may not be exactly. So you have things like the bayonet charge and bombarding and a cavalry charge and fire and hold, forced march and so on. One of the things I've always appreciated about Command and Colors, all the details on these cards. You shouldn't need to look up stuff in the rule book. Everything you need to know, like even Scout, you don't need to remember that Scout has draw two more cards is right there on there. 
So here you have the massive command deck, and I gotta say, it's a very elegant card back. Four command and color Napoleonics. That's it. That is everything you get. The command and color Napoleonics that I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get back into this box. One big complaint about this game, uh, besides these, oh my God, that's gonna take hours, is this box is designed for shipping, not for storage. You are probably gonna to wanna to find some way to store and organize your game within this box or on its own. Now I will note the lid is not gonna fit flush. It didn't originally, but I didn't repack it nearly as nice as when I opened it. So it's gonna be a little worse than before, but that's fine. This one corner, I, I got something down here. It didn't wanna pick up. That's fine. It's probably just how the uh, cubes are dispersed. All right, there you have it. I don't know if you've seen a Command of Colors game before. If you hadn't, I'm sure there were some surprises in there. I'm not surprised. It's pretty much exactly what I expected. So nice, thick, detailed rule book that is walls of text. Not a lot of, no artwork, honestly. Like that, that was something I just realized. There was pretty much no artwork. There was no shots. There were no historical paintings. There was no, no artwork uh, really in here. The only artwork is examples of play. I, it's a war game. What do you expect, I guess? Um, I would have expected a little more, um, like, I don't know, something. Shots from actual battles or, or artwork showing some of the Napoleonic times. But anyway, not in there. Um, two column layout, little small, look clear, lots of examples. Um, then you have, a, I don't know how many, but a lot of stickers. And then of course the wooden cubes, those stickers go on and the dice. If you don't like putting stickers on your game, don't buy this or find someone who likes putting stickers on or pay someone to put stickers on your game. It's not something you find a lot in modern games, but GMT sticking to their roots. Uh, this is a block war game where you're gonna have to put a lot of stickers on a lot of blocks before you can play. And then you're gonna have to find a way to organize all those blocks. They're literally in a bag in the bottom of the box, that's it. They're not even split by faction. Um, one of the good things is you could technically put the stickers on and just toss them in the bag. There, there's no random elements in this game for drawing troops. So if your stickers get a little binged up or scratched, it doesn't matter. Though I'm sure you don't want that, right? If you're a war gamer, you don't want your scratched up units. Um, I gotta say, I, it, it is exactly what I expect to see in this box. But the main reason I wanted to record this is for people who do not know the Command and Colors series. This is what you get when you get a Command and Colors game. Now, personally, I'm really looking forward to trying this out. I'm a huge fan of Ancients, which I mentioned at the top of the video. And this adds new elements. And I have heard this is a better game overall. Even though I am not a fan of the Napoleonic French versus English war, I don't know barely anything about it except for like memes and jokes and pop culture references. A better Command and Colors game just sounds good to me because I love the Command and Colors system. So that's it for my unboxing of Command and Color Napoleonics. Thank you very much for joining me. Before you go, be sure to hit the subscribe, like, thumbs up wherever you happen to be watching this video because that helps more people see our videos. You can find more of my content at tabletopbellhop.com and you can show your support at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Finally, I invite you to check out our audio podcast on your podcatcher of choice. That is the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you should be able to find pretty much everywhere. Um, that's it for now. i got lots of stickers to put on, so I will talk to you later. Thank you for joining me. Good day and game on.